All right, well, I still have power. I don't know for how much longer the way this weather is going. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. Just nasty out there. Definitely a good day to stay home and tie flies, that's for sure. I've been tying up all kinds of stuff today, kind of restocking the boxes, doing some experimenting. And uh, this is the, the fly that I originally wanted to tie up today for the video. Uh, it's a real simple little sculpin pattern. Uh, sculpin is a big food source for sea run cutthroat and uh, it's always good to have sculpin patterns in your box. They will eat sculpin year round. Um, I found some of my bigger fish have come on sculpin patterns and uh, it's really nice to just be able to throw on a nice nice meaty sculpin when nothing else is really producing. There's just pretty much always sculpin around for these fish to eat. So uh, they seldom will pass up a, a nice meal like that. Uh, this fly is tied with uh, fish skull heads. Um, if you haven't used those, they're uh, they're kind of neat. They're they're easy to tie with. Uh, actually, these are the sculpin helmet fish skulls. Um, come in a package of I don't know six, eight, ten, however many are in here, and uh, they also come with the uh, the eyeballs to glue on. They're uh, they're pretty easy to work with and they're they're really cool looking. Uh, they're heavy. Uh, you definitely don't want to use too big of a size because man, they can be a bear to cast. Uh, but they sink right down to the bottom and uh, they they make a great great sculpting pattern. So uh, this is sort of just uh, a pattern that uh, was posted on Washington Fly Fishing by uh, Mr. Stonefish, uh, somebody I have a uh, great amount of respect for as a local fisherman and fly tire and. Uh, I've just learned a lot from that guy over the years and hold him hold him very high up uh, on my uh, respect level, I guess you could say. Anyway, um, he ties his. The one that he posted was with Clouser eyes, or, you know, regular lead eyeballs. Um, I'm tying this one with uh, fish skull sculpin helmets just because I have them and uh, why not? So I have a, a TMCO 811S size 4 hook. Um, six aught olive uni thread and I'm just gonna kinda lay down a thread base here uh, when you're working with the the fish skulls you uh, you tie the whole fly and then you put the head on last so you need to make sure that you leave some room up at the forward end of the hook for that fish skull because if you don't you're gonna have a nice beautiful fly that you've tied up and then you're going to go through hell trying to jam that eye on there and or, or the head on there and get it to work. So to start off with I am using some uh, this is Estaz Grande <laughs> so it's called. Uh, this is a tan color. I'm going to uh, wrap a little body out of this stuff here this will kind of be kind of like the belly, I guess you could say. This stuff is really, uh, it's got long wispy fibers, so you kind of want to fold them back kind of as you're wrapping to... Uh, you can do this in multiple colors. Tans are good, uh, kind of yellows and peaches and golds and, you know... Uh, you just got to experiment, see what you like, of course, like everything else. This stuff makes a really, really nice looking body, though. So, again, you want to make sure to leave. That might be too much. You want to make sure to leave room for the head. So, I'm going to leave here about. Oh. Probably, probably a quarter of an inch, I'm guessing. Next, I'm going to use some uh, red crystal flash. And uh, this is similar to... Uh, Similar to tying, uh, using the red thread on my clousers to make the gills, um, I like to have red on there. So 
I'll tie this in on top. Uh, when I put the, the, the fish skull helmet on, there's actually a, uh, a keeled side to it, a heavier side that will uh, result in the fly riding uh, whichever direction you put that heavy side. So I'm going to have this set up to ride hook point up. I just trim that pretty short. I just want to have some red on there. That's all. And I, I like these hook point up because of the fact that these are going to be fished near the bottom. And uh, anything you can do to uh, keep off the rocks is, is good. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of measure out a piece of tail. I've got an olive and black barred rabbit strip here. Uh, perfect for sculpins and all I'm going to do is kind of measure out how long I want the tail and then I'm going to pierce the hide kind of try to get it in the center if I can right through the hook and then I'm going to take the hook out of the vise hopefully hopefully this works on video and then kind of slide it all the way up and then put it back in the vise. Now I'm not actually going to be tying that portion of the fly or that portion of the uh, the rabbit strip. What I'm going to do is invert the hook separate a, a tie-in point again trying to make sure that I leave enough room and then I'm going to tie that part down so the, the rabbit strip is only actually tied here at the front of the hook want to kind of build a little bit of a thread base here where my helmet is going to end up going. Don't want to get too big because you want that thing to fit on there. But you want to have uh, you want to have something to put some glue in and kind of help hold it on. So, we finish that. Trim a few of these fibers that kind of went a little wanky. Not that that really matters. Okay, so now I've got one more fiber here. I've got my fish skull ready to go. Again, there's a. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. <laughs> I'll try. There's a, a thick side uh, and a thin side so whichever way you put the thick side it's gonna make that side be the bottom so I'm gonna put it with the sick thick side up so that it will ride hook point up I'm gonna put a nice bunch of glue here I'm using uh, Sally Hansen's you can use Zappa Gap works really well uh, you know, whatever you want. Yikes. A little nuts there. And then you just put the hook, the, the head, right through the eye. And slide it back just as, about as far as I can because I want to leave just a hair bit of room at the front and I'll show you why. Per the recommendation on the package you want to take some thread and build up a, a thread bump in front of it so that it can't slide back over. Uh, this uh, hook is about the largest hook I could get away with for this size of fish skull helmet. Uh, so the chances of this sliding forward and back off is 
kind of slim. I had to work it to get it on there, but uh, better safe than sorry. Now you see it's got a nice thread dam there that will keep that from, from moving forward. Now the last step is just to glue on the eyeballs. And this is kind of a pain sometimes. For this I like to use Zappa Gap. Uh, it drives nice and quickly. So I'm going to start on the near side and I'm just going to, there's a little recess where the, uh, the eyeballs go. So it's real easy. Just put a nice little dab of the zap a gap and then just pop the eye on there. I usually use the, the end of my whip finish tool just to make sure I get it into place and that dries really fast so you don't have to now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side And there you have it. That's all it is. Real simple fly. Extremely effective. Uh, this is one that I will often fish on a floating line uh, with a fairly long leader uh, just because it's so heavy and the beaches I fish are so often so shallow. Um, kind of very, very retrieve. I like to give it kind of short strips and then you know a pause and a couple short strips and then a longer strip. I, I just try to envision, I've seen a million sculpins swimming around my feet while I'm on the beach and uh, I just try to kind of mimic that as best I can. But uh, it's a very easy to tie pattern, very effective, uh, great year round, great in the fall. Uh, when, the, when nothing else is working, it's been surprising how many times I'll throw this little guy on and uh, just get absolutely slammed. So uh, give it a shot, put some in your box. They work for you, let me know. Thanks for watching.